WWE legend and Hall of Famer Paul Orndorff, a.k.a. Mr. Wonderful, has passed away at age 71. His cause of death evidently was tied to a long-time illness he'd been battling. In the years leading up to his death, Orndorff was reportedly in a very troubling situation that left him in a bad state of being for quite some time. His son revealed that, among other things, Orndorff was suffering from late-stage dementia. He was diagnosed with cancer in 2011, but overcame it and went into remission. He was previously involved in a class-action lawsuit against WWE that alleged that wrestlers suffered from long-term neurological injuries after their time in the league, but that case was dismissed in 2018. He retired from wrestling after sustaining a neck injury in 2000, but he still managed to wrestle in one last match in 2017 at age 67. Let's take a look back on Paul Orndorff's career. The world of wrestling probably would look a lot different today if he had never risen to glory. Orndorff's Early Career and Rise to Fame Paul signed with the World Wrestling Federation in 1983 and made his debut on the mat in January 1984 with Rowdy Roddy Piper as his manager. Piper dubbed Paul Orndorff Mr. Wonderful, an alias he used ever since. His first WWF match was against Salvatore Belomo on the evening that Hulk Hogan defeated the Iron Sheik, clinching the WWF World Heavyweight title. On January 23, 1984, at Madison Square Garden, Orndorff became one of the first wrestlers to challenge him for a world title. Hogan obliterated his first challenger and moved on while Orndorff fought a variety of opponents, including the intercontinental champ Tito Santana. When Piper clobbered Jimmy Snuka on the set of Piper's Pit, Orndorff, assisted by Bob Orton Jr., teamed up with the rowdy one in his fights. Orndorff and Piper often faced Snuka and the Tonga Kid in tag team competitions. In 1984, Piper's assault on Cindy Lauper pitted Orndorff and Piper against Hulk Hogan and Mr. T. Hogan's feud with Piper meant Orndorff was once again back in the main event picture. He defeated Tony Atlas at the war to settle the score and then played a major role in the main event. The fallout from that match led to the creation of WrestleMania, with Hogan and Mr. T facing off against Rowdy Roddy and Paul Orndorff in the main event. Orton's interference at the end of that match ended up backfiring when he accidentally hit Orndorff with the cast on his arm. That allowed Hulk Hogan to pin Orndorff down and win the match for his team. Shortly after that match, he solidified his babyface reputation by publicly firing his manager, Bobby the Brain Heenan. The Dawn of a New Era Orndorff and Hogan started teaming up to feud with Piper and Orton, going head-to-head -head with them in tag-team competitions across the nation. Orndorff's feud with Piper and Orton continued to build in intensity until Hogan began to defend his title against other wrestlers. Orndorff faced both Orton and Piper in individual competitions, typically without a conclusive outcome. After firing his manager, Bobby Heenan, the Brain placed a $25,000 bounty on Orndorff payable to anyone capable of injuring him. When nobody succeeded at it, Heenan upped the bounty to $50,000. One of the first contenders who tried to claim the new, highly lucrative bonus was Roddy Piper. But their matches got so crazy that Bruno Sammartino was appointed as a referee in hopes of keeping the peace. But Sammartino became the new target of Orton and Piper's rage, which led to Orndorff and Sammartino teaming up to take them on. Orndorff ended up joining forces with a variety of wrestlers in his fights with Piper and Orton, including the legendary brawler Andre the Giant. In February 1986, Bobby Heenan seized the opportunity during a match between Hulk Hogan and Don Morocco to have his buddy King Kong Bundy attack Hogan, setting the stage for their WrestleMania II match. While Hogan fought off Bundy victoriously, Orndorff fought Don Morocco in a match that ended in a double countout. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already and stick around to learn all about Orndorff's years in the WCW. The feuding continues. Orndorff's next big feud was with Adrian Adonis, who took every opportunity to mock him, calling him Hulk Jr., and saying he'd gone soft ever since he teamed up with Hogan. The next time Hogan and Orndorff teamed up against the Moondogs, he wrestled the majority of the match by himself in a bold attempt to upstage Hogan. The following week, during a match where Hogan and Orndorff took on the duo of Big John Studd and King Kong Bundy, Orndorff accidentally collided with Hogan and was thrown out of the ring. When Studd and Bundy then started to attack Hogan, Orndorff did nothing at first to help him out. 
It wasn't until the team had Hogan in a compromised position that Orndorff chose to re-enter the ring to fend them off. He then helped Hogan to his feet and raised his hand in the air before giving him a clothesline followed by a pile driver. After that match, Orndorff reunited with his former manager, Bobby Heenan, and again feuded with Hulk Hogan. After several matches with no clear outcome, Hogan and Orndorff clashed in a steel cage match on Saturday night's main event. Hogan ended up winning that match, which ended their feud. During the feud, however, Orndorff seriously injured his right arm in a weightlifting accident. Since he was in the middle of his profitable run with Hogan, he didn't take the time off to have surgery he needed to properly treat it. After his feud with Hogan ended, Orndorff was forced to work a reduced schedule for several months. While he was away from the WWF, Heenan brought in a new man, ravishing Rick Rude, to take Orndorff's place. Orndorff returned to the ring to both fire Heenan once again and to feud with Rick Rude. He then took Oliver Humperdinck on as his new manager for his fight with Rude and Heenan. His last major appearance was at the first Survival Series on November 26, 1987, when he teamed up with Hulk Hogan, Bam Bam Bigelow, Ken Patera, and Don Morocco to take on Andre the Giant, the One Man Gang, King Kong Bundy, Butch Reed, and Rick Rude. Early on in the match, Rude eliminated Orndorff with a roll-up. Orndorff retired in early 1988, in part because of his arm injury. He then started running his own bowling alley in Fayetteville, Arkansas. While away from the ring, it was reported he died, but he was far from dead, and during that time away from the sport, he recovered from his injury and got back in shape. The WCW Years and Retirement In 1990, Orndorff staged his return to the world of wrestling, with a series of matches against Kerry Von Erich on the indie circuit. He then signed with World Championship Wrestling, debuting as a member of a group called Dudes with Attitudes. He remained with the WCW until the fall of 1990. After taking a couple years off, he returned to WCW in late 92. In 93, he went head-to-head -head with Cactus Jack. After the match, Orndorff was declared by manager Harley Race to be his new chosen man. He was later pinned by Cactus Jack in a Thunderdome match, which kicked off an intense feud between the two. Cactus Jack eventually put Orndorff in his place at Super Brawl 3. Orndorff went on to earn the title of WCW World Television Champion after participating in a 16-man tournament involving wrestlers like Johnny B. Bad, Two Cold Scorpio, and Eric Watts. On August 18, 1993, Orndorff lost his title to Ricky Steamboat at Clash of the Champions 24. Orndorff retired once again and began running WCW Power Plant, where he trained numerous wrestlers, including natural-born thrillers. On February 3, 2005, he was announced as one of the inductees for the class of 2005's WWE Hall of Fame. He was inducted on April 2nd at the Universal Amphitheater in L.A. by Bobby the Brain Heenan. Later that evening, during Hulk Hogan's induction, he was seen clapping when his old rival came on stage. Now it's time to hear from you. What are some of your favorite matches, feuds, and controversies that Orndorff was involved in? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you move on, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.